الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم ما بعد فوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنبيه ريرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اجتنبوا السبع موبقات قالوا يا رسول الله وما هن قال الشرك بالله والسحر وقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق وأكل الربا وأكل مال اليتيم وتولي يوم الزحف وقذف المحسنات المؤمنات الغافلات متفق عليه قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا مولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفع المظنين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa taala the creator and the cherisher of this entire universe Salat wa salam be upon his beloved Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and salams be upon the household the Ahlul Bayt and the companions of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Welcome listeners once again to the program of Mishkat this is the second episode on Mishkat and the previous or the first episode on the second season we have discussed and we started a series on a hadith pertaining to major sins and we've been through two to three hadiths and the last session we discussed a hadith that we've been halfway through and we'd like to begin with today's episode in completing that particular hadith and the hadith was narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and in that hadith it was discussed that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi sallam had said that there are seven things that will destroy a person when he commits these sins and we mentioned that one of it was black magic to make shirk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to kill an innocent soul and to eat interest and to eat the wealth of a often now Mirqat the commentary of Mishkat had mentioned 17 such actions that destroys a person uh, in such a way that these things include the hands, the mouth, the stomach and certain destructions takes place physically these are destructions that takes place spiritually in other words the person may be walking normally he may be eating normally but spiritually the person is destroyed and this is very very important that together with our spiritual well-being we take care of our spiritual well-being in Islam it is important that we keep the heart correct if the heart is correct then the entire body spiritually will remain correct and it is mentioned that shirk and kufr these things deal with the heart if a person commits shirk he's committing a major sin and it affects the heart kufr also the same thing and at the same time to constantly do something wrong with that intention that also affects the heart Allah ki rahmat se mayusi to have no hope with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this also affects the heart 
And at the same time, when a person gives shahadat, which is false, gawahi, false witness, that destroys the tongue. And somebody that is very, very innocent, like a very pious lady, to come about with stories that is not true and accuse the lady for doing something which she didn't do, this also spiritually affects the tongue. To take a qasam which is uh, wrong and you take a false oath that also affects the tongue and also jadu, black magic, these things also it affects the tongue. Then there are three such actions that affects the stomach. The first is to eat the wealth of a yatim. Spiritually, you are affecting the stomach. Remember, you could steal, you could take things that do not belong to you, you can go out to the bazaar, to the marketplace, you can buy the best of the meat, you have the best of the chef to cook it, you could eat that, the meat will taste very nice. Whether it is chicken or fish, whatever the case may be. But spiritually, brothers, this affects the stomach. We're talking about the effects of Gunaya Kabira, how it affects the stomach. The second thing, dear brothers, consuming alcohol. I don't know what the, the, the effects are, you know, for the person that drinks it, but he feels that he's in another, in another world, he enjoys it. But that affects the stomach. Spiritually, it affects the stomach. And the other two actions that affects the private part is to commit zina. Spiritually, it will affect the person. And to get involved in any acts of sodomy. This also affects the uh, private part. Then there are actions that affects the hands, like stealing. Or to kill somebody innocently. That also affects the hands. The other action that affects the feet, the legs, is that to go out into the battlefield of jihad, where you're fighting for the sake of Allah, where you're fighting to maintain the oneness of Allah, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Islam and an Islamic government. Then you go into the maidan, you go into the battlefield, and then you run away, you show your back. That also is regarded as gunai kabira and it affects the feet. Then there is one action that affects the person from head to toe, spiritually, and that is to go against your parents' will, to go against their commands and to do things against their wishes, to not, not to obey or to disobey your parents, this dear brothers will affect a person spiritually from his head to his toe. So we'll continue with this hadith where the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had said there are seven things that will destroy a person. That destruction dear brothers means spiritual destruction. One is to run away from the battlefield, maidan, jihad, to turn your back, وَقَذَفَ muhsanat to give a false qasam against an innocent lady who did not commit any crime and to stand as a witness against her, that will also destroy a person. مُؤْمِنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ and to lay an accusation against her which she did not do. We'll continue with the next hadith narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, Qala qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama La yazni zani hina yazni wa huwa mu'minun wa la yasriqu al-sariqu hina yasriqu wa huwa mu'minun wa la yasribu al-khamra hina yasribuha wa huwa mu'minun ولا ينتهي ولا ينتهب نهبة يرفع الناس إليه فيها أبصارهم هنا ينتبهوا وهو مؤمن ولا يغل أحدكم هنا يغل وهو مؤمن فإياكم إياكم متفق عليه. 
This hadith narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he reports as the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says La yazni zani hina yazni wa huwa mu'minun that when a believer commits adultery whilst he's doing this action of committing, committing adultery at that precise moment Iman is taken away from him till the time where he repents and comes out of that action and he is sorry about it his Iman will be back in his heart but whilst he is doing this action of something which is haram Iman at that moment is taken away from him as the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said La yazni zani hina yazni wa huwa mu'minun wa la yasriqu sariqu hina yasriqu wa huwa mu'minun That when a person is stealing at the time and the action whilst he's stealing Iman is taken away from him till he's complete that, uh, completed that act and then repents Iman is then again Put back into his heart. وَلَا يَشْرِبُ الْخَمْرَ حِينَ يَشْرِبُهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And whilst the person is consuming alcohol, during this action of him consuming alcohol, Iman is taken away from him. And till the time where he repents, then Iman is brought back again to him. وَلَا يَنْتَهِبُوا نَهْبَةً يَرْفَعُ النَّاسُ إِلَيْهِ فِيهَا أَبْصَارُهُمْ هِنَا يَنْتَهِبُهَا And a person when he commits this act where he takes people's belongings that does not belong to him then Iman is taken away from him to such a time where he repents and he makes tawbah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns that iman to him so dear brothers this hadith teaches us that when a person commits these action knowing for the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden us from doing such an act he goes against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that moment when he does these actions of kabair these actions which are which is regarded as major sin guna kabira at that precise moment iman is taken away from him and then he comes to realize that i have committed a sin he then makes toba then iman is brought back to him not to say that uh, he becomes a kafir no dear brothers the the light of iman what is meant by this is the light of iman is removed from his heart so we must guard ourselves and be conscious of the fact that every given time of our life, every second, every moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. Inshallah, Aziz, we will be taking a short break. And when we come back again, we will continue on this hadith and other hadiths pertaining to Gunai Kabira.